As an actor, you know that one aspect of making it in the business is about who you know. But how can you leverage your existing relationships and create new ones without feeling icky? We get it. Today we're talking about what networking really is, why it's necessary, and how to do it without feeling icky. Hi, I'm Cynthia Cortman Westfall, a Broadway music director, conductor, voice coach, and tenured faculty member at one of the top musical theater programs in the country. And I'm Chelsea Wilson, a performer turned voice teacher to Broadway stars and vocal coach on Broadway productions like The Phantom of the Opera, School of Rock, and more. Here on the Broadway Vocal Coach Podcast, you can expect real talk about the business, practical advice, and constant encouragement. We believe there's space for every artist in the industry. All you need is the right support. So consider us your two-woman hype team. Welcome to the Broadway Vocal Coach Podcast, where we help musical theater performers get unstuck and take the next steps in their careers. Cynthia, what are we talking about when we say networking? That's such a big umbrella topic. It really is. I also like to sometimes call it reaching out because for some reason it doesn't sound quite so scary (laughs) to me. (laughs) But I think when we're talking networking, we're talking about the process of making connections and building relationships, which is I think one of the things people get hung up on with networking is they think it means some kind of hustle or like icky way of trying to get a job or get seen. And I think if you can really, this is very much from the business world, it's a process of making connections and building relationships. That's the simplest form of networking. It's also an exchange of information and ideas among people with a common profession or a special interest. So we're all in the world of musical theater. Networking is all about exchanging information and ideas among all of us musical theater nerds. It's also a way of ensuring that you have a group of contacts that you can draw on when you need help or support, like needing a job or information or simply to talk through a problem. So eventually your networking and your contacts might lead to something like that. But in the beginning, it's really about making those connections and beginning to build relationships. Why do you think actors need to learn how to network or reach out, as you like to say? (laughs) Yes. Well, I think it's important for a number of reasons. When you begin networking and you begin building these relationships, you start to build sort of a team or a group of people that can provide you with advice. It's a group of people that can start helping you find even more contacts and even more opportunities. It's a group of people that might be able to help you make really informed career decisions, or it might be a way to keep your name and face sort of at the forefront of people's minds so that when they are thinking about casting or they are thinking about who they want to put on their team, they might remember that they've had a number of really lovely interactions with you, and that might be a way that you get your foot in the door. Sometimes just having these informal conversations can also help you find unadvertised jobs like, hey, I have a friend who's doing a reading next week and somebody dropped out at the last minute. You would be perfect for it. If you had not had that conversation, you would never even know about that. So sometimes it can help you find unadvertised jobs and internships. And finally, it's a way to help fellow actors and folks in the business as a business. So if you can recommend somebody for a job or if you have made some contacts and you've made some connections and recommendations happen, it makes everybody look good. It makes the person who did the recommending look good because they've helped solve a problem. It makes the person who got recommended look good because they are now hopefully a solution to a problem. And it helps the person who had the problem in the first place. So it it just sort of helps everybody when you make these connections and you can start to have this symbiotic relationship with all of these contacts that it just starts to build bridges of everybody kind of working together and helping each other out. Like a network. Like, like a the network. actual word network. <laughs> yes, yeah. Exactly. Like it's not, I think a lot of folks get intimidated by networking because it feels like I'm just trying to get things from other people. I'm trying to draw something out of another person. I'm going to like milk my contacts mm-hmm. for a job, for a recommendation, for whatever the case may be. But if you look at the root, the root of the word, I mean, <laughs> network, it is a, it's a fully integrated community with yes. two-way 
information and exchange and ideas and like you're saying recommendations and all those kinds of things and the more folks that you can be in touch with whether it's in formal ways or informal ways the better you've got folks who are on your team let's talk a little bit about how we might get started maybe let's say someone's moved to new york city or to cincinnati ohio or wherever they've showed up you know for the first time and they have just really no idea how to start in the, in the business in the industry where mm-hmm. they've found mm-hmm. themselves so how does someone get started creating their network well one of the first things i think folks should do is start reading which might sound funny to say but honestly unless you kind of know who's in the business and what's happening in the business it's really hard to know how to reach out to folks in the business so one of my biggest suggestions is to read a little bit every single day and there's a couple easy ways to do this some of our some of our favorite websites and resources are new york times arts and leisure love it read it every week one of my favorite daily pieces of information is called broadway briefing and it's a a daily email that comes to you and it kind of lists all the goings on on broadway even on the west end sometimes concert settings all sorts of things it names all the names of people who are working on things and then of course playbill.com is another good one tons of resources but the point is if you can do just a little bit take 10 minutes to read every day keep yourself up to date on shows that are opening shows that are closing who are the actors who are the creative team members and just start to get these names buzzing in your head a little bit so that if you get a chance to meet one of these folks you might say hey i heard about this new reading that you had last week at such and such how did that go you know you'll you'll just have little bits that you can talk to people about i can't stress how important it is to stay up to date on what's happening in the world of musical theater when it comes to reading every day my freshman year of college i showed up to musical theater 101 and my professor encouraged all of us to set your home page to playbill.com. So every time you opened your internet browser, playbill.com would would come up. And honestly, that was my homepage for like a decade. And it ensured that every single time I opened the internet browser on my computer, I was just at least seeing headlines. Even if I didn't click into anything, I was just seeing headlines. And I think that is a phenomenal way to stay up to date. Set an alert on your phone, set a Google alert, get an Apple news alert, like select your preferences, what kinds of things you wanna hear about so easy to stay up to date these days there's almost no excuse for not knowing what's going on in the professional theater world so cynthia let's get into the nitty-gritty of this how can we network and start to reach out to folks without feeling icky i've got 10 ways for you are you ready before we hit the 10 ways i would just love everyone to remember that while you're making contacts with other people other folks will be making contact with you you will become someone's contact all going to become a part of each other's community your community building not just networking you're building your community so it's the great circle of networking you're always going to be making new contacts but you're also going to always be a resource for other people who are also trying to make contacts so here are 10 different ways that you can think about it number one put some time into your existing relationships who do you already know And I would really recommend making a list because chances are you know far more people than you realize. And I'm talking like, who's the person you went to high school with that's now a costume designer? Or who is the person you went to college with that's now associate director on the tour of such and such? Or who are the directors and choreographers and music directors that you've worked with in any show back from your summer stock shows or on the cruise ship that you did or the community theater production of the whiz that you did in your church basement that was me i did that (laughs) (laughs) i did that in a church on 53rd street in manhattan put all those names together and that gives you a great opportunity to reach out and one of the easiest ways to reach out is simply to say hey you were on my mind i haven't talked to you in a long time i just thought i'd say hi and see how you were doing and leave it at that. The icky part comes when you start to add some things onto it, like, please give me a job, 
or please get me into this audition. It's not about that. This this part of this number one is just reconnecting, uh, making those connections with people you already know, and simply reaching out. There's no ask. There's no agenda. It's simply reconnecting to build some relationships back again. Something that I love that we offer to our BBC members is on their dashboard, we have an extensive list of the kinds of people or the contacts that you are, you've already got that you can think about and, and start to form your list around. In fact, we've got a lot of resources for networking on your existing dashboard. So our existing members, go check that out. What's our second way to be networking, Cynthia? Second way to network is go to events. And there are so many more events than just Broadway shows. Broadway shows are really expensive, although there are ways you can get the rush tickets and you can get half off tickets and things like that. And so that's always great. But go to events like readings and concerts and cabarets and classes and master classes and like someone's open mic night. Go to the birthday party of your friends from college who you haven't seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, show up. Show up. Yes, I was talking even about just events. But yeah, Chelsea, what you just said is also so good. Show up to get togethers and parties and have parties. We used to I used to do tons of dinner parties and people would always bring a friend. And that was another way to be networking with people in such a lovely way because you're all sitting down to make dinner together and you know there's 10 new people at the get together that you've never met but we're all in the same world so we all have mutual friends and acquaintances and it's just another lovely way which i will say for someone like me those of you who have been following bbc probably can tell which one between me and chelsea is the introvert and which is the extrovert (laughs) spoiler alert i'm the introvert (laughs) so Some of this is tricky. I understand for some of us, this is a a little bit of a tricky thing to do, but simply showing up and maybe if that's all you do, I will say my goal, anytime you show up, if you can think to yourself, I'm going to introduce myself to at least one person when I go to an event, that's huge. That's enough. If you can introduce yourself to 10 people, even better. But maybe make it a goal for, you know, for someone like me, introducing myself to one person was plenty. Thank you very much. But just going to events, going to events and introducing yourself to people is, is such a great way to start building your network and building your community. Number three, follow up with your new contacts right away. If you meet someone at an event or an audition or at a party Follow up the next day with a quick email or a DM if you don't have their email. Um, Depending on how well you got to know that person, you might even suggest a follow up with a cup of coffee or a lunch. Kind of use your judgment on that. If it was a really quick introduction, that's probably a step too far. But if, you know, if you had a 45 minute chat at a party, then, yeah, it might be a really natural step to ask them for coffee. I think proactively sharing info that you that you think might be useful is another really good step. For example, you might follow up with someone and say, hey, it was so great to meet you last night. I loved seeing you sing at 54 Below. I wanted to let you know I have a concert coming up at Joe's Pub in a couple weeks. You can share information like that. You might also share an article like, hey, we were talking about such and such last night and I have I ran across this article I thought you might be really interested in. You know, anything. It's really just like, it's no different than like getting to know a friend or having your first date, you know, just finding ways that you think might be interesting and nice ways to continue to make a deeper connection with someone. That's how I got my husband to fall in love with me. After we met, I sent him articles I thought he'd like, which included the New York Times review of the Cats movie. And that really won him. I really won him with that. (laughs) (laughs) wow which leads us to number four keep it casual and use humor which i love i think most people do i honestly think most people in the real life do keep it casual and do use humor and then when we get into this networking thing we get kind of weird and frozen and think that there's a different way to do it and again we go back to you are simply trying to build relationships and make connections 
So thinking of it, continuing to think of it like a personal relationship rather than thinking you need to quote unquote meet useful people or find a job, you're simply trying to start some conversations and through a series of conversations, you can start building relationships and then you've built a network. And then just remember that when you're having a conversation that it really is a two-way process. So remember to not just talk, that you also want to listen, ask questions, be curious, really focus on the other person. And my other bit of advice with the keep it casual and, and find a little humor when you can is to really expect the best. Expect that this conversation is going to go well. Expect that you're going to have something interesting to say and so will they. I always feel like if you enter into a conversation with some enthusiasm and a sense of fun, the other person is likely to pick up on that energy as well. And you're going to have a great little conversation. I love that. It's an energy exchange. It's an exchange in every possible way. All right. What are some of the practical ways that folks can continue to reach out and build their community? That leads us to number five, use social media. Social media makes it so easy to both stay in touch with people you already know and also to reconnect with folks that you haven't talked to in a while. They're usually pretty easy to find on social media, even if you've lost track of their phone number or their email. And it's also a way to make contact with new folks that you've never met. You can start commenting, DMing, liking, all those things on social media. That leads us to number six. Number six. This is important. If you're going to be using social media, keep your online presence up to date. If you do reach out to someone new, expect that they might check out your profile online. And so you want to make sure that whenever anybody is going to check you out, that what they are going to discover is what you want them to discover. So if you've got some old video up there or those drunken pictures from your sophomore year of college, you you know, consider curating your social media presence and your YouTube videos and all that other stuff so that it just feels like a good representation of who you are right now and what you want folks to see when they Google you. Totally agree. Number seven, when you do ask for something, if you're going to make an ask in one of these reaching out conversations, how should we do it? What should we avoid? Yeah, my advice for when you are going to ask for something is to try to keep it as simple as possible. If you're going to reach out to, say, a casting director in the hopes that you might be seen for something, keep it really simple. Simply ask for what you're hoping to be seen for rather than I'm hoping to be seen for Oliver and I have five songs in my book and I was wondering which of the five you thought would be most appropriate because what I was thinking was this one leans more towards that, but this one leans more towards this. And then I was thinking, do you feel like we should wear any clothes that kind of feels like the world of Oliver, or don't you think that matters so much? And, oh, and I work on Mondays. So if I could be seen on a Tuesday through Friday, that'd be really great. Except I work in the mornings on Tuesdays as well at my other job. So, if, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah and exactly. believe it or not, I, people send me things like this sometimes where mm. they're asking me for some kind of favor or some kind of advice. And there's yes. so very much of it. I don't even know where to start to address their needs and I don't even know which of their needs is most important anymore and it's overwhelming and that makes me less likely to even be able to help you but the folks who ask a really simple thing chances are I'm going to try to do it and I think most people do when it's a simple ask and a very short email I think you're much more likely to get a positive response exactly the easiest way for me to click reply on an email and send you a quick reply is if the request or the initial message itself was quick and to the yep. point. I can immediately yep. respond to that rather than having to file it away as this is gonna take more mental energy than I have right now. And, you know, best of luck to you yep. and me if I get a chance to circle back around to that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's Sometimes exactly. it's really tough. Yeah. I completely agree with that. Yeah. That leads us to number eight, which you've written down as have an elevator pitch. Tell me about that. Imagine that someone asks you, you know, tell me about yourself. Go. <laughs> I think this is where people will, if they haven't thought about it ahead of time, might go down a spiral of, well, I'm, you know, I'm an actor. I mean, I haven't worked in a while and, and I have the stage job and I'm, I'm still, and they go down a spiral of all kinds of information that maybe 
isn't necessary or relevant or what, you know, after you think about it for 24 hours, you think to yourself, oh, my gosh, I didn't want to have said 80 percent of that. I would have rather said this, this and this. So having an ele- imagine someone saying, tell me about yourself or what is it you do or where have you worked lately? Any of these questions, I think, can be really triggering for actors because actors aren't always working all the time. Even the most successful of actors are not working all the time. And so sometimes when people say, you know, oh, what are you doing right now? It can send people into a spiral. But to have just thought about how you want to answer that question, I think, helps a lot. So if you know you're going into a party situation or if you're going to go to event, an event where you're going to try to meet some folks – put a little bit of thought ahead of time into some of these questions that people might ask you. And the other thing I would suggest is is trying to find some confidence in your response. I think a lot of us tend to get really self-deprecating and feel like we're being arrogant or overly confident if we say nice things about ourselves and positive things about ourselves. But I don't think that's the case, actually. I think it's really exciting when someone answers with confidence and security. And you might not even have a lot of confidence and security, but you can practice that in your elevator speech (laughs) so that it seems as if you do. I totally agree, Cynthia, because I think there's so many opportunities when we meet new people and the nature of being an actor in this business is you're a multi-hyphenate, right? I'm an actor and I'm also a barista and I also do some copy editing on the side and I'm a kind of side hustle graphic designer in Canva and all these, you know, there's all these things that we do, but how could you share the, the essence of who you are when you're meeting people and introducing yourself for the first time? I think that's really wise. And I think any part of you as the artist is always fully part of you, even if you are doing other things on the side. I'm an actor. I'm a singer. I'm a writer. You can simply say those things. You don't have to say, I'm an actor. I mean, I'm not working right now, but I, you know, you're still an actor. Right. You're still an yes. actor. You're still a singer. You're still an artist. You're still a composer. Whatever it is that you do, that's always a part of who you are, even if you're not currently being paid for a job at the moment. That's still absolutely part of your identity. Amen. I completely agree with that. One other fun thing you can do with your elevator speech is have a little fun fact, which I know my my teenage boys right now are saying, oh my gosh, mom cringe with the fun facts. But I stand by the fun facts because, <laughs> again, it's a fun way to build connections with people. And the way we build connections with people isn't always just through musical theater. It might be that, you know, I'm an actor, I'm a singer, and I love to ice skate. If I were to introduce myself, I might say, I'm a singer turned voice teacher, and I am a new mom. And the best thing that I've read lately is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Have you read that yet? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I actually always love asking people what they've read or watched or listened to lately that they like because people love to talk about what they're watching, listening to, Mm -hmm. reading lately. And like you said, some kind of a fun fact or whatever you've been up to recently is always a great diving off point. When you run into those folks again, what I find is often it's like, oh, you're the ice skater. Yes. Oh, you're the person who just finished the marathon. How did that go? You know, people remember the silly fun facts sometimes in a way that they don't always remember all of the other, you know, more business related things. Oh, you're totally right. That's oh, a really I think great that's point. a fun way to make connections. Number nine, Cynthia. Number nine. This should probably be number one, but it's number nine. Always say thank you. I think everybody knows this, but if you've reached out to anybody and gotten a response, say thank you. If someone gave you a piece of useful information, say thank you. If they met you for coffee, definitely say thank you. That's sort of a big thing. If they've done anything, anything, if they, if even if you just went to a cabaret the night before and it really moved you, write a note the next day that says thank you. I had such a wonderful time at your concert last night. It really moved me. It really touched me. Thank you so much for what you offered last night throughout your concert. There's a million reasons to say thank you to people. So find any and all of the ways and and do it. I just think saying thank you is always, always 
a good thing to do. Number 10. This one's kind of a pain in the butt, but I stand by it. Keep a spreadsheet. Keep a spreadsheet. And then here, sort of the, the wash, rinse, and repeat of networking. You're going to reach out. You're going to track the response. You're going to follow up. And you're going to repeat that cycle again. Let's say you reach out to someone and ask them for a cup of coffee because you want to pick their brain about something. And they respond and say, thank you so much for reaching out. Unfortunately, my calendar is really booked for the next few months, but feel free to reach out again sometime in May or June. Great. You're going to track that response in your spreadsheet so that you remind yourself that come May or June, you can reach out again and you can say, hey, I just wanted to follow up. Last time we talked, I know you were really busy. You mentioned that you might have some time in May or June. So I just thought I'd reach out and see what's happening and just get in the cycle of reaching out to folks, keeping track of how they responded and whether they responded, and then make a plan to follow up. So if you haven't talked to someone in six months, that might be a good opportunity to reach out again. Hey, I haven't talked to you in a long time. Thought I'd just reach out, see how you're doing. Or, hey, I haven't talked to you in a long time. I wanted to let you know that I've got a concert coming up next week and I can set a ticket aside for you. There's lots of reasons you can follow up with folks. But I find it to be helpful when you keep track of how they responded because that ensures that you're never going to be a pain in the butt and reaching out too often because you're going to keep track of what they've said to you. That leads me to remind our BBC members that we have a spreadsheet ready to go for you on the BBC dashboard. If that's something you want to use to keep track of the folks that you have met, you're reaching out to their responses and how you're following up. So I love that resource and it was a great Great add I used to the to, dashboard. Fun fact, my fun fact is I used to have a recipe box with three by five index cards on it. That That's how I kept track of all of my contacts back in I'm, the day. I'm grateful we're beyond that <laughs> organization, although I imagine it was probably fantastic. Fantastically organized. Oh, it was really great. It was sort of like the Rolodex, only it was little index cards that kept track of all of my correspondence. Wow. <laughs> and look at this amazing success she is today, folks. And it's because of that. Look, she knows how to use a computer now. I, I still don't it. really know how to use a spreadsheet, but I'm, <laughs> I'm working on it. I want to I want to wrap this episode up with some of your golden rules of reaching out. And you've got four golden rules here. They are be honest and genuine, be interested and curious, be positive and polite, and give real gratitude and praise. I'd love to hear you elaborate on some of that. Yeah, be honest and genuine. What I mean by that is be honest about why you're reaching out. So this goes back to if what you're really trying to do is make a connection with someone, then maybe don't ask for anything. Simply make the connection. Hey, I just wanted to say hi, it's been a while. I hope you're doing really well. I'm back in town. If ever you want to meet up for coffee, I'd love to see you. Something simple that's honest and genuine. So, for example, back in the day when I, all the years that I was doing The Lion King, it was a pretty hot ticket, especially in the early years. Everyone wanted house seats to Lion King. And I, I cannot tell you how many messages I got from folks who would say something like, hey, Cynthia, I haven't talked to you in so long. I just, I thought of you the other day and I just thought, oh, I'm going to reach out. It's just so, it just has been such a long time since I've talked to you. How are you doing? What's going on? I'd love to talk to you. Oh, hey, is there any chance you can get eight house seats for next month? <laughs> Be like, okay, so you weren't actually calling to see how I was doing or to connect with me at all. You really just wanted the house seats, which is fine. But at that case, then the honest way to do it would be to call and say, hey, Cynthia, this is so-and-so. We haven't talked in a really long time, but I'm reaching out to see if there's any chance you might get me house seats. Like, that's honest. And that it already tells... feels better. It already yeah. feels better to receive that instead yeah. of, like, all of this beating around the bush to begin with. You know, yeah. like, you might think that you're being kind in that delivery, but it's actually just, like, wasting time and energy and a little disappointing then to, like, get to the ask at the end of all of yes. that. <laughs> yeah, just, like, get to it. Just say what you need. Yes. And, again, it's so much easier to just give a quick reply of, like, yes, I can do that for you. No, I can't. Yeah. So still be honest, but be honest about whether it's truly just reconnecting after a long time or if you are going to ask something, just be honest about that. Um, 
be interested and curious. I, this just goes back to making it about the other person so that it's not just you trying to connect with people, but, but that you're connecting with people who you honestly are interested in and you're honestly curious about. And I would also encourage you that if you know you're going to be doing a masterclass with a certain someone, or if you know you're going to be attending a 29 hour reading and there's going to be certain composers there or a music director there, Google those folks in advance so that you know a little about who they are and what they've done and then you can talk about some of those things when you talk to that person you know maybe you've seen another show that they've done or maybe you know maybe there's a show that they cast before that you thought was really wonderful there's you'll just have points of connection that you can be interested and curious about be positive and polite that feels pretty straightforward. I mean, that's just what it is. I will add this. Resist the urge. This might just be me. I I think it's you too though, Chels, and a lot of us. Resist the urge to be to use sarcasm or cattiness to make connection. Uh, it's I really easy to connect agree. in that way, but take the more difficult road by trying to make connection in a positive way. One thing I'd add to that is I've been in an uncomfortable situation before where someone will assume my views on a certain topic or idea or person and make a remark as if to build camaraderie between the two of us again assuming that I feel the same way as them about x y or z and it just leaves me feeling pretty icky when they do that yeah. you know like anything that has a negative connotation or like just like an air of assumption especially when it comes to other people or what might be like large or divisive topics in just in general like Ugh, avoid, avoid, yeah, avoid, make it, make it personal, make it polite, make it positive. Totally agree. And finally give real gratitude and praise. And what I mean by that is if you go see a show at 54 below and maybe it's a singer that you've never encountered before, you've never met, but if, if you had a really good time there, if it was just really fun, or if they sang a song that really moved you to tears or made you think about something in a different way or if you just enjoyed the concert that's a great reason to reach out to someone and give some actual real thanks and praise to someone you know even if you don't know them i think it's lovely to send someone a dm or to try to track down their email or if you really want to be sweet to deliver a little note to the stage door i mean there's all sorts of ways to get to people but i just think it's really lovely to show your gratitude and to praise someone for a performance you thought was especially wonderful. I don't think any of us get tired of hearing that kind of thing. Absolutely not. I think those are fantastic tips for reaching out, building your network, building your community, and being able to feel positive and genuine while doing all of that. If you enjoyed today's episode, take a screenshot and tag us on Instagram at B-Way Vocal Coach. Share it with a friend and consider leaving us a review. If something resonates with you from today's episode, we want to hear about it. DM us on Instagram or send us an email at hello at bwayvocalcoach.com. And if you're ready to get expert mentorship and ongoing training, then you're invited to join us inside the BVC membership. Book a free consult with us. We can't wait to hear your story and help you take the next step in your career.